again, we are going to use a variety of beads, flat beads, round beads. We're going to use beads all by themselves. We're going to use beads in groups, all kinds of different things we can do to incorporate. And I just want to make sure, there we go, that I can watch and make sure I can see what I'm doing. Incorporate wire and beads to make some really cool little components. So let's start with probably the simplest thing, and that is this is a an eight, 18 millimeter sea glass coin bead. And I also have some other little beads that I might be able to incorporate in with that, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to use either 22 or 20 gauge wire. For this particular project, I'm going to go ahead and use 20 because it's 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 a pretty good size. Yeah, so uh, let me go ahead and, and I'm going to cut probably about almost two feet of wire just so we know what I'm starting with here. Two feet of wire, so here's my wire, and you see it's all kind of bumpy coming off the spool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just run my, whoa, there we go. Oh, okay, hang on just a second, there we go, okay. I'm gonna run my fingers or a cloth or something over this wire to condition it, straighten it, and it just makes a huge difference in the way your piece will look. Okay, so starting from the middle, I'm going to do something. Hi, Pammy, how are you? Good, good to see you or to hear from you. Okay, I'm going to start with a kind of an interesting technique. I've got the wire and I'm hitting right in the middle of the wire. I'm right in the center of this 18 inch piece of wire or so. And I am going to put my other finger on top of the wire. And so, and then I am going to actually rotate my fingers around and I am going to make this nice little loop. No tools. Anytime when you work with wire, you can avoid using tools. You are going to help cut down on the nicks and dents and all that kind of business that can happen with this wire. So, and this is gonna be my bail. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take one of the pieces and I am going to wrap it around the other side. Try to get a nice coil going there. There we go. There we go, there, okay? So I've got this nice little coil at the top there and that's gonna be my bail. So the next thing I will do is go ahead and straighten, put these two pieces together. I don't care that it's really not 100% beautiful right here. We're gonna probably end up hiding that. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the bead. And sometimes I can get both the pieces of wire through one bead. The hole here is pretty small, so I think we're only gonna get one through. So I've got a bead that's strung on one side of this pendant. Now. I'll tell you something I'm not loving here. I don't like the fact, and some of the sea glass is a little more opaque than other, but I, I just don't, I'm not crazy about that little line down the middle that I can see. So now I could take this other piece of wire and I need to get it down to the bottom and I could just run it down what's essentially gonna be the back of the pendant. But instead of that, I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna just take my fingers and I'm gonna just kind of make some little waves down the front of this wire. You notice again, I just used my fingers and you know, I'm going to use that as the front of the pendant. It just sort of, sort of does a little bit to distract us from that, that uh, line coming down the front. So, and I can go ahead even now and just adjust my bail. So it's going you know, it will be able to string through that. So, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is to take this bottom piece of wire that I just squiggled, and I am going to wrap it around the other piece of wire. I just want to make sure that's secured there. So I've got that. And you notice already 
this is not going to fall out. It's, we, it's not like regular wire wrapping with something with no holes where you have to really be sure to secure it. It's, it's, you know, it's really secure right now from the beginning. But we need to, to sort of dress it up a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do... Hello, Sandy. How are you today? All right. Okay, and I've got all kinds of little samples here for designs. Hello, Susan. Okay. And so the next thing I'm going to do is make a loop that's going to sort of come down and, and up the front. So to do this, again, I'm going to use my fingers. You notice I'm just laying this thing right on my fingers. I'm going to put this finger on top, and I'm going to sort of come down, around, and up, and then up. So here we go. Okay. You can't see this because I'm covering it with my fingers, but I'm just kind of working it around. I had to get my big tails out of the way there. Round, round, round. This is what we've got so far. I can even turn it upside down. It's probably easy to work with. And I'm going to keep sort of, sort of working this wire to make sure it stays nice and smooth. And, and again, you notice I have not touched a tool yet. Okay, here we go. So we're coming up to the top and we've, I've got this. I really like the way that bottom part looks. So I'm going to go ahead. Now I need to secure this. So I'm just going to take both pieces of wire and I've just wrapped it right around the bale. I just came around and to, to do that. Okay, now pretty happy with this so far, um, but we got to do something on the other side to balance it. And so I think the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and do another little, a little squiggly thing where I come down, around, and up over the top. So again, I'm going to just rest this thing on my fingers. I'm using a combination of my fingers and the bead to work this. Here we go. So I've got a nice tight little coil. I didn't want a big one on the top. And then I'm going to come down. And, you know, I notice already one of these pieces is quite a bit longer than the other, but I don't really care. And I'm going to feed both those ends through that loop I made at the bottom. Hello, Christina. Christine, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so I've got both of these tails through that. One of them is... Again, a little longer than the other. I also noticed that I kind of wanted to cross over, so I'm going to straighten it out. And so I've got this. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up to secure it and come back down around again. Okay. And I think with now, I've, I've got many different options. Um, one of the things I could do is... I've got some little beads here. I can add some little beads to this if I want. So maybe I will do that. I'll take the shorter little end here, okay? And I'm gonna just put maybe three beads. Two, three. And this is, you know, each time is a brand new experience. We don't know what we're gonna get. But I maybe don't want the beads to be, maybe I do. Maybe I just want them to come Maybe I just want one bead here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to bring that up here. Now I am going to pick up the tools for the first time. I am going to cut this little end off here to, you know, just probably it's about a half, a quarter of an inch over the coil. So I'm going to cut that off. There we go. There it goes, flying away. And now I will take my round nose pliers. And I will take that little end, okay, let's see if, we, and then I'm just going to roll it under, there, whoops, there we go, I'll show this to you from the side, this is what I've got, okay, and I just need to sort of just go ahead and close that up, so it almost looks like you can't even see where I begun and ended. There we go. So I got that little bead there. I think that's really kind of cute. Okay, now I got this other piece of wire. And um, I think I am going to, let's just try and we'll see if we like it. If we don't, we'll just do something different. I'm going to come all the way up to the top, okay? And I'm going to come 
you know, really kind of close to the bead. I don't probably need any more wire there, okay? And I'm going to wrap it around the coil. And then maybe I just want another little bead on the top here to counterbalance it with the other bead on the bottom. So I'll just add a little bead here. Okay, so these are the little four millimeter sea glass rondelles. And again, I think I'm gonna call it done. I'm going to cut this right about here. And then I am going to take my round nose pliers, roll, 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 until it just touches the other side. Alrighty, what do we got? Okay, I think this is okay. I'm actually not loving this little extra piece down here, so I'm just going to kind of push it a little bit out of the way and make it a little less noticeable. And I can just adjust things a little bit, make sure everything is looking the way I want it to look. So there's number one. So we've got a pendant with uh, one of the sea glass coin beads and some little rondelles added in there, you know, and I sometimes just for fun, I get some head pins and I hang additional beads down the front. So that's, that's one option. Okay. The second one I'm going to do is going to include three, three beads. And these are uh, Dakota stones. These happen to be the big hole, uh, eight millimeter beads. And I'm kind of debating whether I want to do that one with the with the coin beads or the turquoise. Does anyone have a vote? Hello, Linda, how are you? Not to worry, you'll be able to watch it again. All right, Lynn, and hello, Lynn. So does anyone have a vote? Turquoise or, or um, the uh, crazy lace agate? Okay, I'm going to cut some wire while we're getting started here. Eh. Okay. And again, I think I'm gonna use 22 gauge. Okay, the um, Pammy, I used about 18 inches for the sea glass pendant. I usually cut anywhere between 18 inches and two feet. I do not ag it. Got it, ag it. There we go, get those other guys out of the way. There we go, okay, here we go. So, and and for this one, it's kind of a long pendant, so, and this, here's with the sample that I did earlier. The piece that we are going to do now is probably going to look nothing like this, and that's okay. All right. So, all right. So, um, and I love Crazy Lace Agate. I think it's beautiful. Linda, Linda Blaze, how are you today? All right. So I've got, this time I've got about a two, two feet of 22 gauge wire. Could definitely use 20. Uh, 20 gauge for this pendant, but I'm just going to go ahead and do the 22. Okay, so I've got this again. I'm in the middle. Okay, and Susan says we should do both. Let's see how our time goes here. So, so again, I'm going to, I'm right smack in the middle of this wire. I'm going to just twist it around like this and make my bail. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's that. And then again, I'm going to take, I'm gonna, I always start these things the same way. I'm just going to make some wraps at the top like that. Now, these agates are big holes. They have big holes. These are the big hole beads. And so that means the good news is I can get both my strands through. So I, I, get, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to do with that second strand. Um, the, the flip side of that is, when I pull all these down, the top of my bale is going to want to go right through, and I really want to use some of that to, to wrap the wire when it gets back up. So as I start this, I am going to have to really pay attention that this bale does not go down into the bead, and I'm also going to need a little bit of room between the beads. So I'm going to just sort of maybe start my first coil. I'm going to put these up, but I'm going to just start it a little bit further down. Make sure that these are nice and flat. There we go. Okay, again, I'm using my finger, and I'm going to come up, around, okay, and here we go, up to the top, okay. However, one of the things that I think is really cool about this design 
is that we can sort of go in between the beads. I mean, I could just treat these all as a single thing, but that's kind of boring. So I'm going to take what I look, what I think is like the inside strand here, and I am going to um, put it, well, let's bring it out a little bit more. Let's bring this coil over a little bit more. Okay, whoop, there we go. And I got a little bump there, so I'm going to take a second with my finger and smooth that out. There we go. All right. Oop, let's come up a little further. Okay. Let's, let's just start with this and see where this gets us. Okay. So I'm going to take this wire, and I'm actually wrapping it around in between the beads. And then I'm going to repeat that. I'm sort of losing my bail here, but... Hopefully I'll be able to, and then I'm going to do that again. And I'm not going to worry too much about making it super tight against the bead. I kind of want it to show. And then last but not least, let's bring it all the way to the top. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. There. All right. So this is what I got so far. This thing on the bottom is a big mess right now, but we're going to fix that. Okay, so I'm going to sort of re-establish my, my little twirl here, and I'm going to bring this piece now up to the top. Again, I'm going to keep just making sure that, that my wires are nice and flat, smooth, really nice curve here, and so I'll go ahead and get that going. Okay, so we got that so far. So now we got my two wires back up at the top again. Take a second, smooth those out, okay? And then I'm going to make a little curly cue so we can, can come up around and back down again. So here we go, do do. Got to turn it upside down. I'm just using my fingers to make this nice. Thank you, Pammy. I'm 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 I am okay working on keeping my hands on the camera keep telling me when it's not okay so now i've got this thing coming down here okay that looks pretty good okay and so then i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing i did before and that is i'm going to bring those wires through that loop okay down 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 okay and i've got that okay and you know what you know, I can pretty well be done at this point. This is a pretty good looking piece. And so without much more discussion or or messing around with this, I am going to cut my ends. I'm gonna cut them a little bit longer this time because I'm gonna make some extra little curly guys at the bottom. Okay, there we go. All right, and... Um, here we go. So I've got these guys. I think I'm going to go ahead and work them separately. So I've got the tip with my, my round nose pliers. And we actually kind of covered this in a previous uh, video, just making a little curl like this. This wire is small enough gauge that I can actually do it with my hands. So there we go. So I'll put that little coil right down there, okay, at the bottom. And I don't think I need quite this much here so i'm going to go ahead and cut that even a little shorter okay and then i am going to just roll that around and put it someplace where i think it looks good let's see where where it should be okay let's take a look here that looks that looks pretty good to me okay so again my my little bail is kind of off center so I'm going it's excuse me it's not going side to side so I'm just gonna straighten that out and these uh the cutters uh Joan are uh from uh antelope beads I really like these cutters uh they are I truly believe them to be the best of the you know sort of not super high price cutters I mean you can spend you know incredible amounts of money on cutters and um but these are these are good especially if you only use them for wire if you cut beading wire with these it it will destroy the cutters so 
that's a little tip on cutters there. Okay, so there's number two, and I am not sure um, how much um, more we should do today. We can pick this up and, and do some more types of designs in a future video. Um, just wanted to show you these. These are the earrings I sort of showed in the sample. In this particular case, um, instead of working with, and I'm just going to kind of start this, instead of working with a uh, double piece of wire, because these are so, you know, kind of small beads, I'm just going to work with a single wire. And this is a good chance to demo the wrapped loop, something everyone should have in their their bag of tricks here. So, so here we go with that. So I can, and for these, I probably want to use not the looping pliers like we do for the heavier wire for the um, uh, head pins, 21 gauge head pins, but I really do want to use the round nose pliers for these. So I am going to, first of all, I'm going to put this wire in the chain nose in, in the round nose pliers and you know I can make a big loop I can make a small loop um, for these I probably want a pretty small loop okay and I'm going to bend that first side down that long side down at about 45 degrees okay and then I am going to bring that tail up and over okay so now from the side what I've got is something that kind of looks like a cotter pin. It's sort of, it's sort of, um, is not, not even, okay? Um, oh, yes, okay, I'm going to tell you about that striped ceramic bead in just a second. Okay, so here we go. So, and then I'm going to take that short tail and bring it straight across. So right now I've got something that comes um, up out, around, and straight across. It kind of looks like a lollipop on a stick. I don't want it to look like a P. I don't want it to look like a Q. And then I'm going to hold it from the side. Um, and if I had them handy, I'd probably use my chain nose pliers, but I cheat all the time. So I'm going to hold it from the side, and I'm just wrapping this around. When I wrap this around, I want to come straight, straight, across. You notice I am not kind of coiling down the wire. I've got the wraps that look like they're just really straight tight. Okay, so that now is going to be the top of my earring. I just cut that little piece off um, and you can really get in here pretty well with these little cutters and just get really close to the, so you notice I just really don't have a tail here. So then to start this and with earrings, and we talked about this before, um, we always want to work two at the same time because, um, you know, we just have to do one step with one and then one step with the other and just keep comparing them back and forth so they're even. But for this, I'm just going to go ahead and do this one super simple one right here. So same thing I did before. I'm going to take my fingers, make that little coil. There we go. Come up and I'm going to just keep working that wire there we go like that that's good okay um yeah the chain nose these are actually pammy these are round nose and these are antelope pliers and the chain nose also have you know really nicely um tapered tips so you can really get in some small places i i mean i really do love um the um these pliers. Okay. And uh, Paulette, you're absolutely right. Should absolutely use <laughs> chain nose pliers to hold the loop. And it does leave less marks. I'm just super bad about cheating. Okay. So there's that. And again, I would just take my fingers and I would just make my little loop coming down here, run it through here. You know, and again, I'm good do, working two at the same time, so I'm always 100% satisfied that they are the same. Um, and that does take some practice, okay? And then, you know, I do the same thing. I just cut this off, and um, then I am going to just coil this little thing around. I probably 
off screen again. Here we go. Just make a little coil, press it in, and I have an earring component, which is not 100% even, but you know, you can really do a pretty good job adjusting those. So that, that would be something for a little pair of earrings. Okay, and um, I've got, um, t we talked about this speed. This is actually a Gollum um, ceramic 10 millimeter slider. So it's got this big hole, but um, I found, and I'm, I really don't have time to do it right now. And if we really want to see it, we can do it on another, um, uh, another video. So, but I did exactly the same thing. The only thing is, you know, my little bale, I want to keep it centered here. And when I come out the bottom, I want to keep it centered here. So it takes a little bit of work to try to keep it there. And then in order to make sure it stays there, I am going to use E6000 and I'm just going to fill it in on this side, on this side, same thing on the bottom. And, you know, that will not go anywhere. In fact, as I'm talking about that, I might, you know, start my bale, run the two wires through, and then go ahead and fill that in with E6000, let it sit for, you know, four hours, 24 hours, whatever, and let it harden. And then I just don't have to mess with that at all. But, you know, the, the, the Gollum sliders are stupendous. Love the designs. There's a all kinds of different designs are colorful and so there's something else you can do with one of those okay and then um just i guess i will just show you quickly you know here's another little little pendant i did this is with a sea glass nugget and um i put some beads three beads at the bottom and then counterbalance that with another bead at the top and you know i took that tail instead of just ending it down here i kind of ran it back up to the top again and then, you know, also, I mean, this is just a real simple, very simple pendant with Labradorite. And you can't really see it in this light, but Labradorite, of course, has that beautiful uh, blue flash when you get it out in the sun. So I hope that kind of gives you some ideas as to what you can do with these beads and some wire. Take some practice.